show news, views, property prices and policy impact. We'll cover everything that affects your home buying decisions and make sure you miss out nothing important. Sameer Jasuja here with me of course to take all your questions and give you the best data backed advice and let's tell you what are the cities we're culling out best deals for you in Bangalore at a crore and crore 0.5, 1.5. Chennai, what are the plots worth your investment? The budget there is just about 40 lakhs. Mumbai, of course, you can't go very cheap. Two crores, some of the best apartment options. Navi Mumbai properties in 20 lakh rupees. 20 lakh, did I say that figure? Yes, 20 lakhs. Not is it time to switch. We get you expert view from some of the top names in the country. Okay, let's go down south first. Uh, and before that, up to speed with top news developments in real estate. The government is expected to introduce the much-awaited and highly debated Real Estate Development Regulatory Bill in the winter session of Parliament this year. The Urban Development Minister has said that the bill is under active consideration of the government and the ministry is in consultation with all stakeholders, including the developer bodies like Credi and others. The Securities and Exchange Board of India is likely to finalize norms for the much-awaited Real Estate or Infrastructure Investment Trust on August 9th. Real Estate Investment Trusts or REITs are entities which list units on an exchange and use the proceeds from unit holders to invest in real estate and infrastructure projects. It's the first time that such trusts will enter India and it is expected to help developers monetize commercial assets, attract domestic and foreign capital and help large developers plan long-term projects. According to a leading Business Daily's report, the Finance Ministry is considering a proposal to tax ready unsold flats held by builders. Experts believe that if passed, this will affect developers holding about 100,000 ready or close to be completed unsold properties in the top 8 cities across the country. This is also expected to reduce home prices as builders will have to sell these properties soon by offering discounts among other things. The government is planning on expanding the reach of the 30-year-old Rural Housing Scheme by relaunching it as a national mission, the target to build 3.2 crore paka houses for the poor over the next 8 years. The Rural Development Ministry wants to revive the identity of the UPA government's flagship program, the Indra Avas Yojana, by launching it as the National Grameen Avas Mission. The scheme will have an annual target of 25 lakh houses and fund requirements of 27,300 crores per year. This is in line with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of providing housing with water, electricity and toilets for all Indians by 2022. Mirroring the slowdown in India's realty sector, DLF, India's largest real estate firm, reported a 29% fall in its net profit for the April to June quarter results. While the profits fell, the company's net debt rose by 538 crore rupees. DLF has been selling non-core assets since the last three years to focus on its core real estate business and reduce debt, but the progress seems extremely slow. LMT Infrastructure Finance is planning to raise about $1 billion in a private equity fund. The new fund will be focused on investing in power, roads, ports and other infrastructure projects. This comes after a revival of sentiment in the infrastructure sector of the country. The company aims to finish fundraising activity by next year. Our first caller for a question for Bangalore, Vivek Mukhi. Hi Vivek, welcome. Go ahead with your question. Hi Manisha, thanks for taking my call and uh, a very good show from you and the NBTV team. Um, I have a query uh, regarding the, the 3BHK on mm -hmm. Endu Road. Uh, this uh, I would say if I wanted to use on my own or uh, if I can invert and it can give me a return uh, in say four to five years, uh -huh. which are the good options which I can opt for. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, uh, apart from a new road, uh, is Devanhalli a good option to invest the money in? Mm. Okay, let's first finish Hanur because Devnahali is a big conversation. Nitesh Estates is one project that he is shortlisted and the monthly web city is the other one that he'd also send us on mail. But Hanur city, let's start with that. Uh, well, Hanur is getting a lot of mileage now due to a lot of residential demand coming in from Manita Embassy Park, Loskar Business Park mm. and the under construction Carle SEZ. 
uh, this location is good both from an investment point of view and end use uh, with uh, social and physical infrastructures rapidly developing over here. Uh, the projects that we've shortlisted are from reputed developers, quality developments. Between the two projects that we have, you have shortlisted, we would recommend you to go with Web City as the construction is in full swing, is going to get ready in phases. Uh, the project is also quite close to the Manita Tech Park and uh, Mantri is a reputed developer. Uh, phase 2 is going to be handed over in March 2017 and uh, other phases, the first phase will be in 2016 itself. Coming to Nitesh, it's a pre-launch project, uh, nothing very wrong with it, but it's joint venture. So between the two, we would recommend you with the Web City project and we've got some more recommendations lined up for you. But before that, the weighted average price in this market stands at 45.50 for the mid segment over here and the inventory overhang is in the safe zone of 20 odd months. The price appreciation trends depict a price appreciation of about 9.6% on an analyzed basis. The two other projects that you could consider are uh, which are equally good are Arc Helios by Arc Realty. This is at 4790 rupees a square foot. This project is located on the main Hino Road and the residential development is surrounded by international schools and hospitals and is conveniently clo located close to the city landmarks as well. Uh, it's just 6 kilometers from Manita Tech Park. Aspire by Salarpuriya Satwa, this is at 4790. Uh, this project is spread over 1.7 acres, so a very small project in case you want to go for just you know one odd tower kind of a development. Uh, this project is uh, got all its approvals and uh, the developer has a decent track record uh, for doing luxury apartment projects and also they are specialists in office spaces. This is a mid-segment project that they are attempting to do now. All right, Vivek. I mean, just taking off from where Samir is left, not comfortable at all with Nitesh's pre-launch project. I mean, they are very well intentioned as a company, but they are going through some troubled times on their Devna Hali plotted development project. This is from the consumers and their emails that we've got. So stay away. It's a pre-launch project. You don't want to be where there could be some cash issues at the developer's end. So absolutely go ahead. And that's what Samir has given. A far stronger go ahead for the monthly project web city so go ahead for that and then of course two other projects that we've recommended devna hali a long-term view is something that you have to take i visited it recently it's going to come up quite well with all the commercial and the of course erythropolis or the airport city and office space coming around it but it's still a five to seven year away story aftab alam on the phone line with us aftab go ahead Actually, I am calling from Chennai and uh, I am looking for two BHK apartments for investment uh, purpose. Mm -hmm. So, I have identified two areas. Uh, one is OMR Road and uh, second one is Mahindra City uh, on GST Road. Okay. And uh, I am looking in Mahindra City itself. So, wow. my requirement is of uh, around 1000 per feet. So, any, any, I mean, good options you can suggest me that will be great. All right, so you've chosen, you work in Mahindra City, you've chosen a project right behind it, Avigna Celeste. What do you think? I mean, it should be a good option, isn't it? Yeah, so OMR Road should be out if you're working in Mahindra City. Mm. Uh, the project There's that no you've... Point. Yeah, it's, uh, this project is in Chengal Pet Patu and project is uh, a approved integrated township of 25 odd acres. The project also has all the social infrastructure within it and offering... Uh, you know, a supermarket, hospital, schools uh, that is inside the project, so which is a good part of this mm -hmm. project as such. Pricing is a little higher, 38.50 compared to the weighted average price of this market. Actually, Chengal Petu is 39.70, but we've got another market which is much lower close by, uh, Singaperumal Coil, which is another market that we would recommend for you to consider, which is at 3,200 rupees. Because your budget is limited, you can get a much bigger size. Both the micro markets although have the same inventory overhang of 24 months and price appreciation also has been more or less similar, 5 and 6% on an analyzed basis. For Chengal Patu, it has been slightly higher. This is the villa segment that we are talking about. The project that you've shortlisted gets definitely a go-ahead from our side. And we've got one more project uh, which is Boulevard uh, Villa Phase 2 by Golden Properties. This is much lower, 3299 rupees a square foot. Spread over four acres uh, to be developed in two phases is a gated housing project with 120 row houses and 35 odd apartments. And the project is located on GST Road in Singapurumul Coil, six kilometers from the Mahindra SEZ. So this is one more project that you may want to consider as a row house. 
and the plot area of this is about 644 square feet. All right, so slightly further down, but clearly uh, a larger space is what you get yeah. if you buy in a locality which is cheaper. But if your heart is set on the proj Avigna project, then go ahead, it gets a go. Well, a thumbs up from us. There's been some talk about how the new government plans to roll out its 100 smart city plan, but what's been attracting a lot more discussion is how such an ambitious project can be implemented in some of our older metropolises. So is redevelopment now an absolute priority in such cities? Here's Jude Sanit with this report on Chennai's scope for redevelopment along the iconic Mount Road. It's a timeless testament to Chennai's old world charm, the bedrock of the city's early commercial development. Mount Road, or Anasale as it's called today, continues to remain synonymous with Chennai's older office markets. Cut to the present and the 400-year-old corridor is on the fast track to enhanced connectivity, an almost complete metro rail and developing road infrastructure. And that makes Anasale the ideal contender for real estate redevelopment. But that's not without its share of challenges. If I look at the land parcels which are there, there are very limited land parcels available uh, which is of a decent size which will give you a good A-grade high-rise building. So it's, it's a very difficult. On the one hand, there's an opportunity. On the other hand, we have a problem that you have developments which have taken place prior to 1980s before the development regulations came in picture. Realty consultant Jones Lang LaSalle has commercial real estate along the corridor at 6.8 million square feet with potential for a whole lot more. But tapping that potential, experts say, hinges on the successful unlocking of existing land banks. I think the challenges is about uh, the landowners wanting the right price and developers getting the right price to build. And if that's going to be a mismatch, then nobody's going to take a call. We will have a challenge in terms of seeing that redevelopment happen and getting people back into CBD. Bringing offices back on Anasale could also mean good news to the corridor's residential pockets. As prices go today, homes here see a going rate of 8,000 rupees per square foot in Saidapet. 12,000 rupees in Gindi, 13,000 rupees in Tenampet, up to 15,000 rupees per square foot in a micro market like Nungambakam. Numbers that could see a spurt should redevelopment happen. But it's not just the CBD that will benefit. Developers of projects in off CBD catchment areas also see a possible facelift as a means of traction to medium sized real estate and better zoning of available land. If uh, the redevelopment happens in the centre and more businesses come into the centre, then it will then the residential remains in the periphery. That will make much more zoning, much more a better uh, you know uh, zoning of land rather than having all kinds of activities in all kinds of places. According to Chennai's Metropolitan Transport Corporation, Anasale accounts for an average of 14,000 commuters per hour per direction every day of the week. And that's exactly why redeveloping this corridor and boosting commercial realty here is a no-brainer in the quest for faster growth. But let's also remember that this depends on just how much developers here are willing to pay for some premium range land banks in this neighbourhood. Reporting from Chennai with camera person Edwin, this is Jude Panath for NETV. All right, that's South India. We'll be back in just a moment to connect with us on our phone lines with your property-related questions. Uh, when we come back, there's very little hope of RBI cutting rates tomorrow in the credit policy announcements, but you still need to make the most of your home loans and shop for the smartest deal in town. We get you the tips from top experts on how to do just that. And of course, luxury projects in Mumbai. What are the topics?